recently you switched over. You you were writing these these very hardcore thriller novels. Yes. Uh, you have a new publisher. You work with Harlequin with the yes. Mira imprint. Yes. And you're still writing the thrillers. Yes. But tell me, you know, usually when we think of Harlequin, we think of kind of these girly romances. Obviously, that's not necessarily your bent. Um, can you tell me um, about your writing and how it really works with the Mira line? My books are crime fiction, thriller, suspense novels, as you were referring to. And w what Mira has done with its line is they're really branching out into the really pure thriller. They have a tradition of um, romance, as you said. And they also wanted to get away, I guess, from girls writing for girls. There was the, the evolution of um, the romantic suspense and suspense and historical suspense and paranormal suspense. They wanted to branch out into the pure hardcore thriller line. And they were looking for authors, uh, didn't, regardless of gender. But um, guys had a shot. And, um, and I think the stars just aligned. I was uh, considering branching out and looking for a new publisher. And, Things worked out with myself and Mira, which is under the Harlequin line. You were a reporter for many, many years. Yeah. You traveled to some of the worst, you know, prisons. You were in the Middle East. Yes. Um, you've you've seen a lot. Um, you're using that, I yes. guess, when you're yes. when you're writing. Jack Gannon is going to be your yeah. new protagonist. Yes. Yes. Um, can you tell me how closely does he resemble you, or is there a resemblance at all? Well, uh, you know. The, the, that's a complicated one to answer. In many ways, sure. Sure, the structurally and what I draw upon is anecdotes. In other ways, it's a compilation and my imagination. But um, having worked in, as a crime reporter in newspapers and for a wire service, I can draw on that. Um, yes, I've been out of the business for a few years, but I've been in touch with friends and I try to keep things current. And, and I have a lot of uh, reporter friends who read the books. They help me out with that. Um, I also look for the grain of truth in every story. If it's something I experience, my travels, if uh, if I can draw upon my memories, I've gone to my old notebooks sometimes and look things up. Um, but I also, uh, you can also use creative license because in the end it is, it is fiction. But I try to keep things real or at least plausible for me and I think that stems from the reporter tradition. Can you tell me any specific experiences that you've gone through that have translated directly into a novel? Well, there have been scenes. Um, in my second book called Cold Fear, it was the story of a little girl lost in the Rocky Mountains. I was involved as a reporter in covering the case of a little girl lost in the Rocky Mountains. Um, it had a happy ending, but uh, as the suspense writer, um, I never forgot that story and I thought, what if? What if it turned the other way? What if um, a family went for a camping trip, the little girl was missing, but the investigators thought, maybe she didn't go missing the way you say she did, and maybe there's more to it. So you had a parallel story, and uh, I, I had a lot of fun with that one. Um, so yeah, that one came out of a real case. Uh, when I covered um, some death row cases, I was walked through the execution protocol. I've used that in a couple of books as well, because it's something you never forget. Yeah. And uh, sure, uh, you draw on it when you can, because I think the writing is pure, and, and it's more powerful for the author, and you're, really throwing it out there for the reader and I think they, they get that. So you've been a storyteller oh, your whole well, life or how, sure. how long has this well, been happening? Ever since you were, I was a kid when mm -hmm. you could make up stories and it was uh, you know um, composition time. Mm -hmm. I just excelled at that because it was just you could, could make this up. And I could tell a great story. And um, I heard you were you were first published 15. Is that yeah, was, that can't be right? I was 15, 15 years old when I sold my first short story. I remember my father looking at the check I received and didn't know what the heck I was doing up in my room. I, I wrote it out in longhand and at, at high school I, I was the only boy in the typing class. So after school I used the old manual typewriters to type up the story, put it in an envelope, mail it off. I went to the magazine store and read Writer's Magazine to understand markets and what you do with an S-A-S-E was back then, self-addressed, uh, self something envelope. <laughs> you don't really have to go through that Self anymore. Stand. No, you no, 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 you have to do that anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's true. Yeah, and um, and I thought, well, this is easy. I was 15. All I have to do is some, write something longer. Well, 20 years later, I sold my first book. So I, I put in a bit of an apprenticeship. Excellent. Any advice you have to aspiring writers out there? Well, sometimes I get uh, like a drill sergeant uh, because I'm asked this all the time. But mm -hmm. truly, um, there's no no magic trick to it. Uh, it's really self-discipline. Um, make sentences, not excuses. Um, when you say, well, should I write a book, could I write a book, and then you go, but, as soon as you say that, but, that's your excuse for not doing it. Um, go into a library, go into a bookstore, 
come to an event like this, you look around and you see all the publications, they were written by mortals who were determined to do it. Um, they're just as mortal as you are. Some probably have more going on in their lives than you think you do at your time. So it's really, the only thing that's stopping you is in the mirror. Just sit down, write your book, and get on with it.